Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. In this video, we're going to look at uh, endothelium-derived relaxation factor. So we're going to look at endothelium-derived relaxation factor, which is more commonly now known as nitric oxide. But, we, uh, but originally, it was not known that it was nitric oxide, so it was just called the endothelium-derived relaxation factor, because we knew the endothelium was releasing something uh, that was causing uh, the relaxation of the smooth muscle around uh, the um, endothelium in blood vessels, uh, but we didn't know what it was, basically, so we called it endothelium-derived relaxation factor, or EDR. F. Okay, right. So, my plan for this video then. Okay, well, uh, firstly what we're going to do is I'm going to describe to you the structure of a blood vessel, just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, then I'm going to def uh, describe to you uh, the process of the endothelium being stimulated to release endothelium-derived relaxation factor, or nitric oxide, and then uh, we're going to look at how it acts on the smooth muscle surrounding uh, the endothelium uh, to cause uh, vasodilatation, i.e. to relax the smooth muscle and cause the lumen of the smooth muscle, uh, well, the smooth lumen of the uh, blood vessel uh, to increase, basically. Okay, we'll then look at how this, um, how this well, how this explains the acetylcholine paradox, and I'll just explain to you what the acetylcholine paradox is right now. Basically, if you inject in acetylcholine into someone's bloodstream, it causes hypotension, it causes a major drop in blood pressure, and that's because it makes the blood vessels um, vasodilate, basically. It makes them uh, dilate, so the lumen of the blood vessel gets larger, and that causes blood pressure to go down. Okay. However, if you actually take out a piece of smooth muscle from the uh, walls of the blood vessel and you put acetylcholine on it, it causes the blood vessel sorry, it causes the smooth muscle to contract, which should constrict the lumen of the blood vessel. And basically, what we're going to see is the answer to this is when you inject the acetylcholine into the bloodstream, it doesn't actually act on the smooth muscles. Um, cells, it acts on the endothelium, which then it releases endothelium-derived um, relaxation factor, or nitric oxide, which then causes the smooth muscles to relax. So that's how it produces a relaxation when you actually uh, put, give acetylcholine in vivo into the bloodstream, whereas when you actually put uh, acetylcholine on smooth muscle cells, as we saw in the previous video on smooth muscle contraction, uh, it causes contraction of that smooth muscle cell. So, let's start off with the structure of a blood vessel. So, the structure of a blood vessel. So, uh, blood vessels, uh, there are loads of different types of uh, blood vessels in the body. There are arteries, veins, capillaries, etc. Structure of blood vessels. Uh, but we're going to do the sort of generic structure of a blood vessel, which you can apply uh, with some care to all of them, basically. So, um, basically, blood vessels can be divided uh, can uh, be divided into three main layers, and some of the layers won't always be present in certain types of blood vessel. But usually, most blood vessels have some degree of all three layers. Okay, so the innermost layer, which I'll draw inside here, lines the lumen of the blood vessel through which the blood is flowing. So the blood is flowing through this bit here, so I'll colour that in red. So the blood is in here. Okay, now lining this innermost layer, well, lining the lumen of the blood vessel, then, is endothelial cells. So here is an endothelial cell, here is an endothelial cell, here's another endothelial net cell, etc. So you have lots of endothelial cells lining, um, lining this lumen of the blood vessel. Then underneath those endothelial cells, which I'll draw in uh, this turquoise colour, you have a basement membrane, basically, which is made up of collagen. Okay, so these two layers, this basement membrane on which the endothelial cells sit, 
along with the endothelial cells themselves, is known as tunica intima. So the basement membrane, which is a, collagen, uh, a collagen-based uh, membrane on which these endothelial cells sit, and the endothelial cells themselves here, so let me colour in one of those endothelial cells, but first I'll give it a nucleus. So here's its nucleus, okay? And we won't colour it in orange because it will smudge everything. We'll colour it in yellow, okay? So here it is in yellow, which has still managed to smudge everything. Uh, so this is an endothelial cell here, endothelial cell, okay, and those two layers together are known as tunica intima, okay, and tunica comes from some old language, I think probably Greek, uh, which means, um, which means layer, actually it might be Latin, Greek or Latin, one of them, okay, so tunica intima this layer is here, tunica intima, and then intima means close. So it's from where, uh, where the word uh, intimate came from. So it means close to the blood. So tunica intima, the layer that's close to the blood. Okay, surrounding tunica intima, let's say this next layer, so peripheral to tunica intima, uh, you have a layer known as tunica media for the middle layer. Okay, so this is tunica media here. Right. And uh, tunica media is basically a layer consisting of a huge number whoops, of uh, smooth muscle cells. So, you have the smooth muscle cells wrapped um, um, around the circumference, basically, of the blood vessel. So, let me draw a little smooth muscle cell here. So, the smooth muscle cells are oriented uh, around the um, around the lumen of the blood vessel. So you basically form rings of smooth muscle cells around the blood vessel. Then, if you think about what's going to happen when these smooth muscle cells contract, well, all of them are going to get slightly less long. So if you think about having a ring of smooth muscle cells, if all of the constituents of that ring, and let me draw this entire ring. So if here's another smooth muscle cell. Draw them a bit more obviously now. Here's another one. And here's another one. If you think about all of these smooth muscle cells now contracting, then they're all going to get, um, well, they're all going to become shorter, basically. Their length is going to decrease. And what that is going to mean is that the overall, um, overall circumference of this ring which they make up is going to be reduced, basically. And if the circumference of the ring they make up is reduced, then that means that the... Um, the diameter of that um, circle has reduced, basically. So what's going to happen is, as the overall circumference reduces, uh, the diameter is going to reduce as well. So the lumen of the blood vessel is going to be constricted. Okay, so basically, contraction of these circular smooth muscle cells around the outside of the blood vessel uh, leads to uh, constriction of the lumen of the blood vessel. So it leads to vasoconstriction, which just means constriction of the um, vascular lumen. Okay, right. So tunica media basically is a layer consisting of these smooth muscle cells, these rings of smooth muscle cells. It also contains a lot of elastic tissue as well, so it will have a lot of um, elastic fibres. Um, and in or arteries which are more, uh, well, in blood vessels which are more elastic, such as the aorta, is a very elastic um, blood vessel because it has to obviously take the huge volume of blood that then is pumped into it when the heart contracts, uh, when the left ventricle contracts and ejects all the blood into it. It has to expand and then it has to return to its original shape, so it needs a lot of elastic tissue. Other blood vessels, such as the coronary arteries, are more, um, are more, um, well, they're more muscular, basically. Okay, so they all have a more muscle in this layer. So different blood vessels, basically, can vary in how much muscle is in the tunica media versus how much elastic is in the uh, tunica media. And some blood vessels, such as capillaries, barely have tunica media. Okay, and then the final layer outside of the tunica media here, this final layer is a layer known as tunica adventitia. Tunica adventitia. Okay, and basically this consists of connective tissue, a lot of um, collagen, uh, and what it does is it firstly 
forms the outermost layer of the blood vessel. And secondly, it also connects the blood vessel to its surrounding anatomical structures. So it's going to connect the blood vessel uh, to the portion of the body that it's actually in, basically. So I'll draw this in yellow. Okay, so tunica adventitia then, in yellow, which isn't showing up very well at all, but never mind. Okay, the other function of tunica adventitia is that it also has the blood vessels uh, which actually supply the tissue of the blood vessel itself in it. So larger blood vessels um, need to have their own blood supply. Small blood vessels, like capillaries, don't need their own blood supply. But larger blood vessels will have smaller blood vessels which are giving nutrients and oxygen to the tissue um, of that makes up the wall of this larger blood vessel. And these smaller blood vessels within the Chinica adventitia of larger blood vessels are known as vasa vasorum. Vasa vasorum. Okay, so big, big um, blood vessels that are visible to the human eye, basically. So if you, when you do anatomy, all of the blood vessels you learn about in anatomy, uh, the saphenous vein, the aorta, the uh, brachial artery, things like that, they will all have vasovasorum in their tunica adventitia. Capillaries, which of course you don't learn, thankfully, in anatomy, um, those uh, will not have their own blood supply because they are tiny. They're pretty much, uh, they'll have one endothelial cell making the, up their entire um, entire structure, really, uh, with a basement membrane and a bit of collagen around the outside, but they don't need a, their own blood supply because they're right next to the blood anyway. Okay, it's only for larger blood vessels that you'll have phase of Okay, right, so that's the structure, that's the general structure of a blood vessel now. Uh, in the next video, what we'll move on to is we'll start with this process of injecting in acetylcholine into the blood, uh, bloodstream, uh, and we'll see how that is going to produce uh, relaxation of these smooth muscle cells and therefore vasodilatation, because if they relax, then uh, the circumference of this ring of smooth muscle is going to get larger, and therefore the diameter of the ring is also going to get larger, so the diameter of the lumen of the blood vessel is going to increase.